All right, welcome to the Fit Bucks podcast today. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, welcome there as well. Uh, got a, another exciting episode. This actually really piggybacks off of something we we talked about in our in our last podcast a few weeks ago. Um, right when all this stuff with the Wuhan virus hit, you know, I jumped on to a, a, a special podcast talking about managing your risk and your return will be there. And today uh, we have F Scott on and it really piggybacks on that conversation because when we talk about managing risk, like I said in the last podcast, a lot of people only think about assets. And I was talking about how it plays a role in both the big formulas we always talk about, income minus expenses equals remaining cash. Then what you do with that cash is build assets or pay off debt, which equals net worth, right? And in that, I made a comment about diversifying out your income and, and all that type of stuff. And guess what? That's what Scott here is here to talk about today. So, and, and by the way, this is also going to be a little awkward for me because, as you guys might know, he has a podcast as well, and I've been on it I think what two or three times. So, um, this is going to be the, the roles are reversed a little bit here. So, welcome, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Joe. I mean, uh, you know, it's been uh, it's been a pleasure having you on our podcast for sure because uh, it's uh, you know about all things healthcare education. So. Uh, you know, nothing bigger than student loans looming over everybody's head right now. So, um, yeah, man, it's been a, been a pleasure having you and I'm excited to be on your show now. Yeah. So those of you that don't know, he, he put out a book It's called PT educators, student debt eliminator. Um, you know, talking about multiple streams of revenue and, and a big thing is, is a lot of our audience, yes, it's PTs, but we also deal with a lot of other people too. A lot of other healthcare. Cool part is, is that this can actually be applied to anybody. Um, the stuff that's talked about in this book, um, so it's not just PTs, it's, it, it, you can do this as OTs, PAs, actually anybody. Um, and it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, but before we start talking about the, the, the book and, and just diversifying out income, what does that actually mean, all that type of stuff. You know, for those of people that don't know you, just, just give us a little bit of, of background. You know, I, I know a lot about your educational background and everything, but you know, just take us through that journey and, and how did you get to, to where you're at today? Yeah, sure. So my journey is not the common journey by any means. I started out as an English major at Wake Forest University. And, uh, you know, I had placed out of a bunch of English classes in freshman year because my dad was an English teacher on Long Island, hence the name F. Scott Field. He had named me after F. Scott Fitzgerald, but his first name was Francis and my dad didn't want to name me that. So he just left it as the letter F, which is cool until you turn 16, then everything's first name, middle initial, and all your legal documents get screwed up. So... Um, that's how that kind of started. But senior year, I realized I had plenty of time on my hands. I think I was taking bowling intro to Japan and uh, golf. And I did not know what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, I basically, you know, I didn't want to write, I didn't want to edit, I didn't want to teach. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with an English degree at this point. Um, so I started volunteering, they put me in the hospital, uh, they put me in the PT department, and I was filing files and stuff for them. And I saw this, you know, PT playing with patients. They were, you know, batting balloons around and, you know, helping them walk and kicking soccer balls and stuff. And I was like, oh, this looks fun. I could do this, you know. Then I looked at the prereqs and I was like, nope, don't have that one. Nope, don't have that one. Nope, don't have that one. So I graduated in four years, but I had to take a whole extra year uh, just in math and science to get into a PT program. Finally got into East Carolina University, which was a master's program back when I went through it. They offered a third year transitional doctorate if you stuck around. So I said, yeah, that seems like the right thing to do. It seems like that's the way the profession's going. So I'll just do that and take another year. Uh, I started it there. My dad kind of had some health issues and got sick. And I, I never really finished it up at ECU because uh, my window of opportunity there closed. Uh, while I was trying to finish up my, my capstone project, uh, my dad actually got sick and, and had some heart problems and passed away. And so. Um, you know, I had taken my board exam three times at that point and failed it all three. And I had to actually wait a year to take it again. And so while I was waiting that year, I worked as a PT tech at the hospital where my dad passed away. And every morning I had to walk in past that room and clock in. And, uh, you know, it was brutal. It was pretty miserable. I didn't, uh, I didn't even know if I wanted to be a PT anymore at that point. You know, it kind of sucked having to go through that grind and that mental and emotional issues, you know, every morning going to work. But, you know, I put my big boy pants on and, and figured my dad would want to see me finish this out. And so I, I did eventually pass my board exam, thankfully. Uh, and uh, 
I ended up going to University of St. Augustine to finish off the transitional doctorate as well because they took a bunch of credits from ECU. So uh, the, that was helpful. It knocked it down to about a year, year and a half program. And while I was at St. Augustine, the head of the EDD came and asked me and said, hey, are you interested in teaching eventually? And I said, no, not really. It's, you know, I've seen, I've sat in on a couple of my dad's English classes and those kids are dicks. I'm not, I'm not doing that. But eventually I thought, I started thinking about it. I was like, you know, if my back goes out or my legs give out, my hands give out, whatever, and I can't do manual therapy anymore, eventually I may want to fall back on something. Uh, so maybe I, I will teach eventually down the line. I'll just start the program now. Whatever happens, happens. So I started the EDD. I finished that in January of 2018. And now I am the proud owner of two doctoral degrees, neither one of which I want to use traditionally, and about $140,000 worth of student loan debt. So that's uh, my educational journey in a nutshell and uh, my magic number, so to speak. Um, it was 140000 As of last year, I knocked it down to about one thirty, and I got big plans for the next two or three years. So yeah to be able to knock that down pretty quick right now as you know the government just waived interest for the next two months so that should help knock it down a little bit too right yeah so one of the big things in there and i mean we we don't touch on this very often at, at fitbox we will you guys will start seeing a lot more of this over the next coming months and years as we roll out more of our technology but at the base of what we're doing is what we call human capital analytics Okay, and behavior analytics. So traditionally in finance, all these algorithms, it's only looked at like with your financial capital, but behavior plays a big role in that as well as this thing called human capital. Okay, and what human capital is, for those of you that don't know, it's a mixture of your skills. That could be the education from discipline, like do you run marathons, sports, education, you know, whatever it is. And that's important because that helps out project out your, your income into the future. And that dictates everything, like what you do with your student loans, how you start a business, how you how much uh, mortgage you can afford, how you invest. But more importantly, it talks about the risk to your income. And this is a huge topic because of right now what's going on in the world with the Wuhan virus and everything, people getting laid off. I think I just saw the unemployment report this morning. It's like 3.2 million people, like, you know, all that type of stuff. And it's like, well, how can you diversify that, that, risk, that, that income? And for those of you that have either taken our course or seen some of the articles I put out about retirement income diversification, that means you want income in retirement coming from different places. But that starts now, right? What can I do to start as I'm working in side hustles or whatever it is, what can I do to start generating income? And so, as Scott, that's what you had, you know, kind of started realizing, like, hey, I can't do this for the next 30 years. Or what happens if something happens to me? Or what happens if there's a pandemic? You know, so talk a, bit, a little bit about that. Talk about some of those different types of uh, skills you can develop. Um, touch on a little bit, you know, what's in your book and whatnot. And yeah, let's go from there. Yeah, so uh, I host a podcast called the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. And the last question that we ask every guest on there is, if you could change one aspect of higher education, whether it be DPT or otherwise, what aspect would you change and how would you change it? And the number one most given answer is cost. Everybody thinks the cost of healthcare education is too high right now. Our debt to income ratio is bad and getting worse. Um, so I, you know, I, I couldn't disagree with that answer. It's just, it got to be so painful. Every time I heard that answer, I was like, I got to do something about, about this. And, you know, my way of taking it head on was just to kind of write a book about the different side hustles that I had been working on for the last year or two. And, uh, you know, kind of put together a methodical way to go about adding different streams of revenue to your business, um, you know, in order to kind of help defray those costs and help try to pay off the student loans as quick as I can. And, you know, Joe, I dropped your name and Fitbucks in the book because you guys really were the ones that got me started on the right direction. I, you know, got to chat with you and said, what do I do? You know, I have no idea. I'm not a, a you know, student loan expert, but you know, you kind of said for your situation, you know, and it's different for everybody, but for you, it looks like, uh, you know, put it on the income driven repayment plan, drive it down as low as you can monthly, spread it out over 25 years, and then aggressively pay it off as quick as you can. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing. That's the game plan. So let's look at the bigger picture here. As far as, you know, multiple streams of revenue as, as healthcare providers, 
you know, we have pretty solid, pretty safe jobs, but even we are not immune to something like a pandemic or something like a natural disaster or something, you know, like a state of emergency. You know, we just, when something this big happens, even physical therapists are getting laid off, right? And that's one of the safest jobs in America. So, you know, just like stocks, you know, you really do want to diversify your skill set, you know? And all that I'm saying is, you know, we have to look at optionality, right? And the ability to put ourselves in situations that give us opportunity. And a lot of times it's just using the skill sets you already have and that you already learned from PT school or from, you know, your PhD program or an EDD program or your residency or your fellowship, whatever it may be. You didn't get to this point in your career without having some pretty refined and pretty amazing skill sets. So let's start putting those to use because paying off your debt, there's really only two options. And I know, Joe, you talk about this all the time. Either you cut back as much as you can and cut, trim the fat or you increase your income, right? They're, those are the only two options. And you can only cut back so much before you're like living on rice and, and you know, beans and, and ramen for the rest of, you know, your eternity while you pay off your student loans. Whereas the income, that is unmeasurable. You have no cap to how much income you can make. So let's start focusing more on that, using our skill sets and really starting to look at side hustles and side gigs that make sense and eventually may even become your full-time gig. You know, I have no problem with that either. I mean, my situation's a little bit different than most in that, you know, my wife's a type one diabetic. So I always need some form of medical coverage, you know, and not just medical coverage. I need good medical coverage. Our benefits have to be top notch. So, you know, my job for the last three to five years has been looking for uh, a nine to five that'll offer me the most amount of benefits and the most amount of bang for my buck in that category with the least amount of hours worked and effort. And so far, I've been able to, you know, find a couple of really good positions that fit my needs until they didn't. And then, uh, you know, moved on to the next thing I could find that fit my needs. So, you know, I'm starting to really hone in on a really good position that I think will take care of me from here until eternity. And then uh, I'll just keep working on my side gigs and my side hustles. So I, uh, I created a list of about a hundred of those side gigs and side hustles that can be found at my website, pteducator.com backslash 100. And it's called PT Educators uh, Revenue Idea Generator. And all it is is a list. That list out of those hundred, I've tried personally 25 of them, right? Of the 25, there's about eight to 10 that I felt were really worthy of continuing on and keeping up in my portfolio. And, uh, you know, those are the main ones that are in the book today. Um, and those are the ones that I kind of teach in my master class that are really um, not only financially beneficial, but they fit our skill sets. They're relatively, you know, low time investment. Um, and they, they amount to enough where you can pay off big chunks of your student loan debts at a time. You know, it's not just like, you know, your 700 or $800 a month payments or your thousand dollar a month payments. We're talking five to $10,000 contracts here and there that you can apply big chunks to and really knock out big chunks of those student loan payments. Um, you know, and, and people can argue over whether or not you should be paying them off that quick or if you should be investing somewhere else or whatever. Uh, I'm just... I'm staying in my lane. I have my goal. I have my vision. That's just what I'm going to do. And then once I'm done, I'll reassess at that point. And then my money can start, you know, the money's still going to be coming in from, from the, the side hustles and the businesses. Then I can determine where that goes as far as investing and stuff. But right now the student loans are, are priority number one for me, just because it's not really fair to my family, you know, to keep $140,000 of student loans looming over our, our heads. So um, especially if, if, you know, I don't use it in a clinical sense or I don't use it in an academia sense. Uh, you know, it feels a little weird, feels a little odd to not necessarily be doing that uh, completely all in, but I still got one foot in the boat. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not completely abandoning either of those uh, occupations. It's just uh, not my full-time passion. So that's yeah, where I'm at. You, you brought that up the other day. I, uh, I went to my wife and, um, those of you that don't know, my, my background is actually investments. Like that's what I grew up doing. That's what I'm a quote unquote expert in, all that type of stuff. And uh, you talked about having the debt. You know, it's not fair to your family having that. Hey, <laughs> went to my, my wife two nights ago and I was like, so babe, um, 
we can take out a lot of equity out of our houses. Like we paid them all off. Like we got a lot of equity in them. I could take all that money and do one of two things. I can dump it all in the bit bucks or I could take it all and start putting it in the stock market and leverage it all. And she was like, or you could do number three. And number three was you're not doing any of that. <laughs> so uh, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> um, if it was just me, I'd be like, let's ride it with it. Um, but yeah, I like the stock market right now, man. It's looking prime for the taking. Um, I, a couple of different things. One thing I want to clarify because it's something that you just brought up, and a lot of people and I got confused when you said it about just on the student loan plan. I'm gonna talk about some other stuff too, but you mentioned you know your student loan plan was is to pay it off, but you're on an income driven repayment plan. And you know, just to clarify what a lot of people what would the reason why that worked perfectly for Scott is because like he said, he gets these chunks of money because of the side hustles. He just doesn't know what it is. So he wants to pay off his loans, but he, he couldn't go on a regular, you know, principal and interest loan where it's a required payment every single month. And so what he strategically did was go on an income driven repayment plan to drop the money, to drop the monthly payment. And then you can also reinvest some of that money into his company and the side hustles to get that going. And then as he's getting those chunks of money, He's using that to make extra prepayments and paying it off in those chunks. So he's giving his budget some flexibility and he's still trying to pay off the loans aggressively. It's just not your quote unquote cookie cutter where every single month he's making those payments. So he took advantage of the plan. We see a lot of self-employed individuals doing that. A lot of people sell side hustles, but that's what you can do too. <clears throat> you hit on it, you know, exactly one of the big things that I always talk about, about, you know, the budget, about people are always like, well, what can I do with cutting expenses? It's like you can only cut expenses so much, right? And income, you can grow infinitely. Um, but the skill set, that, that's the big thing I want you to, to talk about too. So a lot of people ask like, oh, you know, well, you can start Fitbox because you're a financial expert. You know, that, that's not why I could start Fitbox. It was because, I, yes, I was a financial expert. But then I used all that other time to start learning about things like marketing and psychology and you know, uh, Google ads and Facebook ads and different marketing techniques and, you know, manipulation techniques and all these different things and sales techniques. There's a lot of skills to learn. I mean, just narrow down a few that, that you've said, look, I learned these things, learn these things, learn these things, but these are the ones that really allowed me to start going into this other direction. Yeah. You hit a lot of really key ones there. Um, talking about the market, marketing, digital marketing, um, you know, uh, persuasion, copywriting, stuff like that. So if we go back to the beginning, right, I, I use my English major background to write a book, right? So now I'm an author, right? I use my English major background to write a blog. So in the blog, I have a couple of affiliate links, links back to either books that I recommend or products that I use that I'm a, you know, a fan of, and they all have a Amazon affiliate links to them. So if people click on them and purchase them, I make a small affiliate commission off of that. If not, uh, Amazon's affiliate program is pretty cool. They track for 24 hours. If anybody purchases anything off Amazon, whether it's your book or recommendation or not, and you still get credit for it. So like, you know, my blog is currently, you know, not as active as I'd like it to be. I probably write maybe one blog or two blogs a month. I'm looking to ramp that up here in the next quarter now that I have more time. But, uh, you know, I probably make anywhere between 50 and $75 a month just off of my blog, you know, and that's just off affiliate income. Um, and then let's take it even a step further. Um, you know, the hundred, the list of a hundred, um, uh, side hustles. I also have a YouTube channel with, um, and essentially a vlog cast on it. It's not a full blog or a podcast yet, but it will be in the near future. Right now it's a video blog, but every week I'm interviewing somebody in the healthcare profession that's doing that side hustle that I've listed there. And they're explaining how they're profiting off it and how they're doing with that. Um, you know, and so YouTube has a monetization program where if you have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watched hours, you can uh, make money off of their uh, pre-roll ads. So they run an ad for Toyota or something on the front end for 10, 20, 30 seconds. And if people watch it more than X amount of time, you get paid, you know, money for that. Uh, you know, so you can make an income monthly off of, off of YouTube, you know, with very little effort. Um, 
I also use my EDD and my curriculum development to help build courses online. I have several courses that I sell. So there's the online education business, right? PTeducator.com is where all my, uh, my courses are housed. And I help other healthcare practitioners uh, create courses and sell them as well, you know, because if they've never done it before, um, you know, I can go in there and help them and show them how to do it. And I do it all through ClickFunnels just because that's what I learned on and that's the platform that I know best. So if, if they want my help, I can only do it on ClickFunnels because that's the only platform I really know. They're more than welcome to go use another platform. I'm just not of much help at that point. So if anybody uses my affiliate link through ClickFunnels, I get paid a monthly affiliate from them as well. And ClickFunnels, I think that at the end of this month, I stand to make about $350 and that's recurring every month for people that use my affiliate link to sign up for ClickFunnels. So, uh, you know, these little things start adding up and building up to where eventually I've got, you know, a pretty good chunk of money coming in every month just off of these little side hustles here that don't require too, too much work or that I'm multi-purposing, right? So, you know, if I write an article for somewhere, uh, let's say it's an online article, and then let's say I get paid $100 for that article, well, I'll throw it up on my blog too, and then backlink to it so that everybody's getting, you know, SEO, search engine optimization going on, and everybody's happy, and, you know, it, it works for me. I'm, I'm, you know, kind of double dipping there, but it's, it's you know, trying to work smarter, not harder, you know? So, so that's those are some skill sets. What's that? I'll give, I'll give you an example. I mean, those are some of the things... Like, obviously, I'm the founder of Fitbooks, and, and these are things that, you know, I, I, I've done currently. Like, I haven't launched some of this stuff because my wife is doing it. But when you start learning about some of these things, like with Amazon and whatnot, I'll give you a perfect example. So we, we moved the company out from San Jose to Austin, Texas uh, last June. And we started documenting um, just everything about the move like little tiny things like, you know, this is like a list you need to start doing when you're moving, blah, 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 blah. And I'll give you an example. Like right now, uh, we dropped in like an outdoor pool and barbecue and all this type of stuff. And my wife wants me to create, build the furniture, right? Out of pallet wood, which I've never used this saw in my life. So it's actually been very interesting trying to learn how to do all this crap, right? But what I, what I did, and this is just one example, okay? is I have an LLC that's set up. That's just a single member LLC. I used to use it to write stock research reports. And that's how I'd make side hustle money is companies would publish it and every click I would get paid for it. And in a lot of those items that I was writing about, I would have to research. Well, I would go buy them and guess what? It's research now. So now it's a tax write off. So I kept that company open because that's how I own shares and different things. It's an investment company. But now what I've done is like the saws and the tools and everything else I put on that business credit card. So now I got a, a, a tax write off on stuff that I was going to buy anyways, probably to, to be able to do this stuff. And we're recording it and saying like, look, like the pallet buster that I bought. This is the palette buster. This is the, how it works. It's the best way. These are some nuances. And guess what? We put it up on YouTube. And then guess what? From there, I can put a link on YouTube of that palette buster to go buy on Amazon and I get paid into SCOS point. It's on YouTube now. So if there's an advertisement on it, I can potentially get paid off that too. And again, it's, it's just looking like every single part of your life you can do that. Like how to stain the wood, how to sand the wood. Like you go on, the reason why I got this idea about doing this with the pallet wood is because everything that I saw on YouTube myself was from somebody that had like an entire work area in their house or their professional crafts. I don't have that. Like I got my front porch. I got to do this shit on and I can't have nails flying all over the place because I got a three-year-old. Like this isn't for me. And so that's why I was like, well, I can do this stuff. Like just put it up on YouTube. So um, but that, that's, that's the word, but that's just showing you how little tiny things you can start generating income. Now, skill wise, like you brought up the courses okay? and a lot of people always ask me questions like, are courses worth it? And it's like, well, you, some aren't, some are, but sometimes you have to invest to build those skills. Right. So talk about, you know, like, you know, your course, how it's investing in those or some of the other stuff, like I know you brought up ClickFunnels, 
And he has a bunch of courses, uh, for those of you that know Russell Brunson, about how to do some of the stuff on the sales side. You know, so talk about both of those, both like stuff that you might have done and then also uh, where you're at now and, and on your courses and whatnot. Sure. So, uh, you know, my courses started out with just me trying to figure out what I loved, what I enjoyed, hobbies, you know, things like that. So my first course that I ever wrote was actually a fantasy football injury review course. Uh, I was kind of joking around with my buddies. We played fantasy football for the last 10, 12 years together. And, you know, I told them that I could be the next Stefania Bell, you know, and they were kind of joking around laughing. I was like, no, seriously. And they didn't really believe me. Yeah. Stefania Bell was my wife's mentor. Yeah. So I... I, uh, I made a course on every injury that can happen during the year and how it, how it happens usually, what it looks like, what's involved with it, and then the return to play, which is the key idea there is how long is my guy going to be out? And uh, I put it out there. I released it. And I think the first year, I think I sold three or four copies of it. You know, it didn't it flop? Nothing. No, but I didn't have really an audience. I didn't have the right uh, marketing knowledge. Um, the next course I put out was actually an eSports um, and video game injury prevention course. Uh, esports is kind of getting big, and I treated a couple of esports e athletes. I call them athletes. But, uh, you know, it, it was one of those things where I was like, I was already doing this stuff. I was using the same skills I would for my repetitive motion injury, my typers and my, you know, data entry people that I was treating at the workman's comp job. It was all hand, wrist, elbow, shoulder injuries. And I was like, this is the same stuff that esports people are going through. So I just took the same programming I would with them and I applied it to an esports. Uh, it was a book at the time. Uh, I've taken it down, but I'm going to put it back again. I'm just redoing the funnel for it because I have a couple of upsells I'm going to add to it. But speaking of funnels and a lot of this, you know, stuff that, that we learn about in marketing, you know, Russell Brunson, who's the creator of click funnels, which is now a, a billion dollar company um, has a couple of books out and, uh, you know, they all kind of teach you how to storytell, how to create an online business, how to get people's attention and keep it, how to convert people from interested, you know, knowing, liking you and, and getting interested in you to eventually purchasing your stuff. And again, like I said, he's got a bunch of courses on that. There's a bunch of stuff through ClickFunnels, but, you know, that marketing stuff was the tool that I needed and, and eventually led me into a consulting business and a digital marketing agency where, you know, I helped a couple of PT clinics do Facebook ads. Um, you know, I've helped a couple of people with copywriting and creating email sequences. Um, you know, and eventually I, I met up with the right guy online um, and I started, you know, doing injury analysis uh, for the fantasy football counselors elite program. And then in turn, he put my, my uh, course out to his audience, which is over a hundred thousand, you know, um, Instagram followers and, and several million downloads on his podcast and on his YouTube channel. And then I finally started getting some traction and making some sales on that course. So, you know, it wasn't necessarily the course. It was that I didn't have the audience and I didn't exactly know how to market it. So, you know, once I got a little bit smarter about my uh, networking skills and, you know, my, my ability to, to market to the right people, um, then it made a, a huge difference and it made an impact. Um, you know, and I think it doesn't take too much. I mean, you have two options, right? Either you're, you're time poor, right? Or you're money poor and you, you got to choose one or the other. So if you don't have that much money, you probably have a little bit more time. And that's when you can go and invest it into things like courses to learn a new skill set to help build up, you know, your own little side business. I mean, <clears throat> one of the, my first consulting gigs was uh, an injury prevention and wellness, uh, course. It was basically, I come into your company, I do a quick audit, you show me where you're having the most workman's comp injuries and why. And then I come in and show them how to do, you know, proper lifting, body mechanics, uh, repetitive motion injuries and how to avoid those, you know, um, just smart things to do at the workplace to try to help decrease workplace injuries and workman's comp claims. And the only reason I did that was because my company that I was working for at the time didn't want to do it. And I said, fine, I'll do it myself. So I just, you know, went around to local companies, asked them all if they'd be interested and a couple of them were, and my consulting business was born. You know, I mean, it was as simple as like, well, if you're not going to do it, I'll do it, you know? And it just fell into my lap. I had no desire to do that. That was not a job of mine that I ever thought I'd get into, but you know, it, there was a need. I filled it. 
I already educate anyway, right? I, I, I have my educational doctorate. I'm teaching people online through my master class and through my online courses. I already know how to teach. It's just taking the content, which we already know as physical therapists. And I think most physical therapists, you know, and, and people in the rehab field are, are natural educators anyway, you know, because we're teaching patients all the time. We're having to educate patients and family members all the time. So I, I feel to some extent we're all educators, you know, uh, and I even have a, a t-shirt on my website that says I'm an educator, you know, because I truly believe that. Right. And that's a drop shipping thing. That's another Avenue, another, you know, possibility for me to get my name out there, get the company name out there, but also make a little bit of, uh, you know, a commission off of each shirt and hat sold. So, and, and I don't have any inventory, right. It's all drop ships. So, it's just, again, another stream of revenue that you can add to the business, you know, a little bit of promotion, a little bit of income, and uh, it's fun stuff, too. You know, you make shirts and hats, and you put them up there for uh, for the public to see. Yep. Well, that, that's one of the big things. I mean, of course, this is all about personal finance, too, because what's going on right now is a perfect example. Like, when you have different income streams, and you're, you're good to go. I mean, even in business, you can think about doing, like, you know, we oftentimes talk about like focus, 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 focus. And it's like, yes, that's absolutely like you can do that. Uh, but like at Fitbox, I mean, we have a number of different revenue streams that we drive revenue off of. And the big one that we're going to drive revenue off of, we haven't even launched it yet. But it's like, hey, look, we got little tiny things over here, over here. That's why, like, when I go back to San Jose, people are like, what do you mean you didn't do a $5 million investor round? That's how every company is founded, right? No. Like, companies actually make money. Like, that's how, how I use it. Five. But the reason why I bring that up is because, I mean, right now in, in, in the financial world, in our space, I get calls from some of these CEOs from these companies right now because they're all dying because of what's going on with the student loan stuff. I mean, I, I've already talked to uh, three uh, CEOs from different lending companies. And they're panicking from student loan refinance companies. Because for those of you that don't know, I mean, they just put a thing out for like the next six months. There's like an interest deferment for, for two months. You know, there's no required payments for six months. Like, so basically they're looking at it for like a two to six month span. They're not going to get any refinancing out of new grads. And they're just, they just saw their volume just dry up. And they don't know what they're going to do because that's their only revenue stream. And it's like, you know, but they have, but this is where they don't even see it. They have literally lists of hundreds of thousands of people and they're doing nothing with it. Nothing. And every, and in the last two or three years, I've gone to every single one of these CEOs. And I've said, look, I can provide you with a different revenue stream because I can do X, Y, Z with that list if you, if you help us do a co-marketing thing. And they said, no. Every single one of them. It's like, why? It's, you got it. And it goes to what your point was. You have skills or there's very cheap ways to develop some skills that you need that you can monetize in other ways. Let it be in a business. Let it be in your, your, just a side hustle. Whatever it is, you can do it. All right? So. Perfect timing, yes, Scott. I know that we, we went to film this a couple of times and, and, I, and I think it's just actually glad, good that I had to postpone it a few times because this, like, with the, the virus and everything, this is like the, the perfect time to have recorded this. So yeah. thanks for coming on. Before we end it, um, any last words of encouragement, anything else you want to talk about about the book or the course or anything else? You know, the floor is yours. Yeah, I think, you know, it's like we talked about. I think it's important to recognize. I think people highly undervalue. Say this, but I put myself in the position to have all of these opportunities, you know. Uh, it, it, it didn't just fall into my lap. It was a lot of years of hard work, right? But optionality is going to be key, right? Because, again, even with all that's going on here, like I, I got moved from – uh, full-time home health therapist with the Medicare changes and PDGM at the beginning of the year down to a part-time PRN and then uh, through the end of this month and then because of the virus now they're not even going to have the numbers moving forward so they're essentially letting me go. I'm not really worried about it aside from finding something with benefits because of all these little streams of revenue that I've built up that are coming in you know relatively passively or with me bumping a little more work behind it in my free time. So, you know, I think PT or, you know, your job, your nine to five should just be the tip of your iceberg. You know, I really do. If you want to try to recession proof yourself or you want to try to, you know, um, give yourself the best opportunity to survive in a crisis mode like this, uh, you've got to diversify your skill sets. You've got to get out there and do all these different things. 
And, you know, the one thing you have to be aware of, obviously, is shiny object syndrome, right? You don't want to just jump, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, this looks cool. Oh, I could do that. But if you put it into play in a systematic way and you get one revenue stream working at a time and then move on to the next one, you could have six, seven, eight revenue streams. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? And just because of my personality and the way I am, my work ethic and the way that I work, I'm okay with juggling 10 things at once. Cause I know, yeah, I might drop two or three, but the other six or seven are going to be pretty awesome. You know? So I'm okay with that. I've forgiven myself for my, uh, my failures, uh, and, and, and know that there's going to be more to come and that'll be just fine. But yeah, diversification at this point of, of you as a person, right. Of you as your skill sets. Um, you can still stay involved and still keep one foot in the healthcare boat. But look at the other things you can do to add to that. Because it, it also makes you, you know, a, a better option for future employers. If you want to stay in the nine to five and get another job, well, now you look a lot better if you can bring on to them, oh, I also do digital marketing. So if you need that, I can do that for your business. You know, it makes you look like a better candidate if you're going up against other people, if you have all these other things that you do. Oh, by the way, I'm a published author on neck pain. We could hand that out to patients who have that issue, you know, like, it just, it's, it's, it's very simple if you put it in a step-by-step -step process and just start knocking them off the list and, and realize you're in it for the long play, you know? So people can pick up that book, pteducator.com, or uh, actually, I don't know if the link is live on that yet. So just go to Amazon and look up PT Educator Student Debt Eliminator and you can find it there. Yeah, no, and I'll give you one, one more example about these different skills or the clinics. I mean, my wife had started teaching herself uh, about two months ago um, doing telehealth stuff. Guess what just happened? Nobody at her hospital knows how to do it. Yep. Guess who just timing. Like every, all these PDs are getting laid off, right? And get, get, guess who just got is going to be getting a raise because she's the only one in her clinic that knows how to do telehealth. Yep. Right. Perfect timing. And again, we talked about this. We're not recession proof. We're not bulletproof. You know, we're still at risk. Even as physical therapists, we're seeing it now in the pandemic, we're at risk. So the best thing you can do is just try your hardest to make yourself, uh, you know, slightly less at risk, right? You know, find ways to diversify, find uh, skill sets that are going to help you out, find things that'll make money for you, even when you're not making money, um, and try to get rid of that nine to five as quick as you can, you know? Uh, yeah. I may never have that option, but I'm going to work my hardest to to make my side hustles as, as fun and as, as good as I can, you know? Yep. And, and the thing that I'll leave everybody with too, because as Scott, you, you hit on it at the end right there. I touched on it in the last podcast we did about managing your risk and your return will be there. These are all things to start working on. It doesn't happen overnight. You're not preparing to do something where you're going to magically make money in this recession. You're getting yourself ready for the next one because there's one thing that I can guarantee you, we're going to see something like this again. In fact, it used to be rare. Think about this. In the stock market, we've had three 30% declines in the last 20 years. That was unheard of 20 years ago. Unheard of. Now, like, hey, I can't believe it. I'm 36 years old, and this is the third time I've been through this. So people always keep asking me why I'm not panicking. A lot of the, the new grads that have been investing for the last five or six years that are panicking. I'm like, I've been through this. I know exactly what's going to happen, right? The end of the world only happens once. So either A, my money's going to be worthless, or B, just keep looking at the long term and keep building up. So that's what this is about, is these income streams, these skills. Start working on them now. So that way, when the next one hits, you're more prepared. And then keep working on it because when the next one hits, you're prepared even more. You just keep going and going. Exactly. I've been working on mine for probably about three years now. And uh, I've still got another five years to where I feel like I'll be fully at functional capacity where I'm happy with what I've created. So, you know, eight year plan, nothing big. Yeah, exactly. So, with that, thanks for coming on. It was a pleasure. Reversing Absolutely, Joe. In this time so i'm um, sure i'll have you on again down the road and then we'll be talking to everybody soon thanks thanks bud